challenge I faced was that it was looking like I had little or no time for myself. So at this point in time, like when you get into a new class, you map out your goals, your targets, okay, this is what I want. I mean, I just want to probably pass or I want a distinction. And, you know, I'm not really giving it that kind of thought that I feel is necessary to get the distinction. So at the end of the day, when they release our awards, that was... I'm not the type to, you know, go for night class. I read better in the mornings. And My name is Okoli Tochuku Cosmos. I'm a 500 level medical student at the University of Nigeria in Oko Campus. My name is Ms. Gucci. I'm a 500 level dentistry student in the University of Nigeria. I'm from Anambra State, a school for government, besides from also. My name is Omu Andrew Chukwanaka. I'm in 500 level. Hi guys, my name is Eze Chinino Ives, I'm a 500 level medical student, I am from Enugu State. Okay, <laughs> why I got, why, what inspired me to get a distinction was that actually I received a lot of promises, most especially my parents made the promise to me that they are getting a new phone for me if I get a distinction in the student business. So that was what motivated me to work hard for it. I, and during the lockdown, I had enough time to go through my, my third MBBS courses thoroughly. So that was basically what motivated me. Okay, well, what inspired me, more like what inspired me or what makes me want to work towards distinctions because I mean my second BDS, second MB and third MB by God's grace, it has been that way. So it's basically the same inspiration I had entering school, like entering, entering, university, entering university. I just, I don't know, I feel like I just want to put in my best at every point in time, every class I find myself. I want to start early, I want to do well, knowing that I've, I've tried my best, I worked for it and then I got grace because some people work for it and they don't get it. So it's just the inspiration. Well, I think me personally, I want to know that I put, my, I put in my best and I want to get the best out of my efforts. And then my parents, my dad, my mom, my siblings, I just want to put that smile on everybody's face too. So, I'm doing it for myself, doing it for them, doing it for my friends, my lecturers, doing it for God, just because having an excellent result, really, or having an excellent performance anywhere you find yourself, just doing it extremely well, it's more like all thanks giving to God at the end because He's really the person that did it. So, yeah, they're all my inspiration. My second MD, I've always thought about a, decision, a distinction, but passively, passively passively because I've not really given it that kind of thought that I feel is necessary to get the distinction. So at the end of the day when they released our was our assessment I was among the top guys so my friends were normal wine and guy you guys get distinction you guys all those thoughts so I started thinking about it or not as much as I should have. At the end of the day I got a 69 in anatomy so when I went to check the results, I saw 69, 64 in biochemistry, I've forgotten what I got in physio. So the results somehow made me sad. Of course, I already knew I passed, but I wasn't, I was very happy when I knew I passed. But then seeing the result and having a 69 in anatomy, I was not like, ah, who knows, maybe if I should have just added a little effort, I could have gotten a distinction. And going by the way I prepared for, my second MB, I was a little distracted because then I always came from Maryland to school to see different different people. That's by duration. So fast forward to third MB class. 
I was still with my mindset, just do what you can, see how it goes. But then something happened, and I feel the whole story changed from there. So I got to know Goshi. In one of our discussions, she actually said, Conceive it. It didn't make much sense then, I won't lie, it didn't make much sense. I didn't think about it that much. But then I feel the defining moment was after mm, doing our first test. I didn't put a lot of effort. But the results, like, the results were so much better than what I expected, like, measuring from the effort I put in. So I was like, if this is how it goes, if I just put in commendable efforts, just maybe. And then, very close to our main exam, we formed this study group. So, in summary, let me not elongate the whole thing. The motivation was having 69 in anatomy, and I made to go. She, she already had two distinctions, and oral biology distinction too. And then she told me, conceive it and you back it. My family, my family. You know, I always like to make my family proud because yeah, they're all I have. So that that joy, that joy, because you know, I remembered how happy my parents were and how they'd always like just tell their friends, you know, my, my daughter made distinctions in the second and years. So seeing them that happy just inspired me to continue doing the best I can to keep making them proud because they really do a lot for me. So this is like my only way of paying them back and you know, saying thank you for always being there for me. I won't say I was dull, either I won't say I was smart because I was a hardworking student. I wasn't like always, I wasn't the first, first, first one. Like, oh, you can find me maybe in the fourth position or in the continuous assessments, maybe third. But most, my most, most, most times, essentially, I'm always, I was basically the fourth position in my class in most cases, except when. They changed our classes in SS3, then they came up to second, sometimes third. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, in my college days, well, yes, I was, I was, yeah. I basically did the same thing I do now. Like, I read, I prepared for my exams, I prayed, and my grades were high. Okay, in my school, though, in my secondary school, there was. There was this thing they call Star Club Association. So it's more like the star students in quotes. You get an average of above 70 for senior class and 75 for the junior students. That's from SS1 to SS3 and just from GS3. So once you get that average, you will become part of the star students. So it was more like a motivation for us because I came into this school and my SS1. And okay, hearing star students, you have just a single room to yourself. In contrast to people that stay eight in a room, so it was a motivation, something to work for. So yeah, it helped me, and I entered the star club, and I was consistent with it. Yes. Like maybe not, uh, maybe as smart as I am now, because of course people grow, up and hopefully most people grow up to become better. So maybe not as smart as this, but then I wasn't, I was never the dog. Uh, I have never struggled academically. I have somehow been a little above average in terms of academic. And my secondary school at Government College, Afibo, Government Secondary School, Afibo. So that's why I had my secondary school, both junior and senior secondary. And throughout my stay there, just apart from my first term in secondary school, the other times I came top of my class and even when I was a little threatened academically like when they had to combine both you know how they do it just one A, B, C, D, E, F depending how large the class number is when they combined the whole result I was a little afraid and they you know, find myself somewhere in it something like that I've always been conscious about my result but then they did that and I still came top of the class. So somehow I've always been able to have over. Well, yes, I guess. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I've always done very well as a student, you know. And yeah, getting straight A's and the rest of it, yeah. yeah. 
for hematology for example i watched videos i read my textbooks and i read my materials and i also revised each of the topics from time to time so for the videos i used atoma videos for hematology what i did was that once i watch a topic once I watch a video on, of a topic, I'll read that topic in the textbook. Then read the material, read the topic in my materials, like the slides sent by the lecturers to us. So that's the one I read last. So that in case there is any contrasting thing in the material, between the material and textbook or video, I'll take what's in the material because it's the lecturers that um, wrote down those lecture slides that will set up questions for us. So the essence of watching the video and reading the textbook is to facilitate understanding and to retain the things I've learned for a long period of time. Because for pathology, it requires understanding, not basically reading your materials alone. So for morbid anatomy, I watched videos I read the materials and I read the textbook. So for the videos I used for more in morbid anatomy, I used Dr. Najib videos and Atoma videos. Once I watch a video of the topic, I read it in the textbook. The textbook I used was Robin's pathology textbook, medium size. So once I watch a video of the topic, I will read it in the textbook, then read the material, then from time to time I go back to revise. So this helped me a whole lot. I was able to understand a lot of things in morbid anatomy. I was able to recall most of them in my examination. The next one was chemical pathology. I liked chemical pathology because it was is easy to understand. So I, I did not really do much for it. I only read my lecture slides for it. So I read my own my lecture slides for chemical pathology. Then for microbiology, I read the textbook intensively while at home during the lockdown. So I read um, clinical microbiology made easy, made ridiculously easy. Then I read it very, very well. Like I said, from the beginning of the textbook to read. So it was very easy for me. I was able to understand a lot of things. Then I read my materials as well. First of all, consistency is like the basis of everything. Well, first, okay, personal rules, like you, you tell yourself at this point in time, like when you get into a new class, you map out your goals, your target, okay, this is what I want, I mean, I just want to probably pass or I want a distinction and in one of these courses or in all, so people have any point, just set out your goals, then you start early to work towards them. Because having a goal, it gives you, I mean, you feel the need to keep pushing. It's different from when you don't plan, when you don't have any plan. So, first of all, I I, start, I, start, I like starting early though, because um, crash reading is not for me. Like, I don't know, crash reading probably not work for me. But I start early, I go for lectures, attend lectures, because lectures are very important. Coming to TED MB, let me be particular about TED MBBS, the lectures are extremely important. Maybe not as important as it was in second MB. Because TED MB is like, there's a short duration for the program, and you have a lot of things, there's lots of things you're supposed to know, you're expected to know. So you attend lectures, lecturers in class, they give you the MCQ questions, the essay questions, they tell you what they want from you. And attending lectures is basically it because you hear it from class, then you come back, you read that material, you probably go for tutorials, you also discuss it with friends. Like, that's in that way, you've read this thing for like the first time or so. You don't wait till when you go through the whole textbook again, and that means you read it for the second time. No, so attending lectures, being consistent in your reading, like, I was I tried to be consistent, like, read as much as I could every day, make sure you do something, no matter how little. Then using past questions, I love using past questions because past questions it helps you, it tells you how ready you are for an exam. It shows you where your deficits are, things you still need to look up and read very well. And it's another, it's another advantage when past questions become like when they're repeated and you just answer them because you went through past questions. So I use past questions. Then I had a discussion group. I my discussion group then we used to run in the night so that even if like rather I will be sleeping by then. 
but when they come for the, for the discussion, I'm awake and we go through past questions. It was past question oriented and it was close to the exam. So, because going through past questions on my own and trying to revise, there was no time. So, I had to use the discussion group for past questions immediately to do my personal revision. So, yeah, I think this and all, and of course, I cannot forget to mention prayer and grace. So, just as much as you work hard, pray hard also because you can't do anything. So, Thought them be is not the time where you go out hunting for material. The whole materials are almost there. They are released every day after the classes. So what I did was I knew there would not be enough time to start going through it over and over again. So I just tried that at the end of each day, even if it is one material I can try to go through. And believe me you like the time is always not there because then we have classes from 8.30 to like 5 p.m. So, and if it is days we have to go to it cause like you're coming back to your room by 6 after 6. But then I still tried my best to at least open one thing, try to finish one material a day. Maybe sometimes I've always not been a night person, so I'll sleep, wake up maybe around 4, 4.30. And between 4.30 and maybe 6 a.m. that I'll start preparing for class the next day. I tried to look at another material like it just helped me to reduce the whole workload like okay then my um, what's it called my weekends like i made very good use of my weekends because then when i was still at you know before we crossed over to um, this old side like i made sure that i leave my room so that i would get to coast charis latest by 9 a.m and i'm staying there till sometimes 4 or 5 p.m so I just try to go through as much of the week's work as possible so that the workload just kept reducing. And then after the first part of the work, the whole concept became clear. So I wasn't struggling with understanding, I was just struggling with getting the fine details of each material. So I feel these are just the things that gave me a little edge in getting this distinction. Trying to do some work and sometimes during our transit, like we spend up to 30 minutes on transit on the days we go to it cause and so those 30 minutes I try to look at something even if it's 16 pages of a 32 page material I just look at it so that the next time I'm going to it I'm like trying to finish it no matter how tired I am so that's well I'll start with I'll start by saying there's no formula just know how you work best for instance I, I read better in the morning and in the night I don't really read in the afternoon then I don't go for night class and I'm not the time to read like three four hours at a stretch and most of the time that I'll read for 30 minutes and take a break so it's all about just knowing how you function and just doing what works for you and also consistency is key just try to be consistent attend classes attend classes and take notes take notes and leave the rest to God. Don't look at what the people around you are doing. Don't say, oh my God, oh my God, this person has spent eight hours reading Mokolo Hall or, you know, something like that and probably not doing enough. Just know that we are all different and we function different. So just do what works for you. Do what works for you. I had little time to myself. So and number two, I kept forgetting a lot of things, so I had to create time to revise and go. Then um, I had no time to cook, so feeding was not a problem. Yeah, at the point, some at the point, in fact, I doubted I would get a distinction. It's not like I was expecting a distinction or something. So. I really doubted myself when I saw when, when I was even called for my distinction viva I was shocked because I wasn't expecting a distinction in pathology in particular. So yeah, I doubted myself very well. I wasn't really in sure of this team. Mm. Initially, but which I think is what almost everybody complains of when they start telling me. The it was stressful. It was too so much for me. Like and then we moved from from UNEC to Itoku on Mondays and then going from both sides to unique. It was just like most days you have colour. I feel like 
um, second MB, we found that it was a longer duration and the lectures don't even span that long. Like most times classes are ended by 12 or by one or two, then you have practicals on some days. But then MB, like lectures till five, except days you have practical, you end by two. And there was just a lot, a lot to do, a lot, like it was too much. And after every lecture, I just got I was always tired, so initially I couldn't find my feet. I didn't know how to go about the hotel and like there's pathology, the intense focuses in pathology, then there's pharmacology as a whole. It was just a lot. And I saw myself not really, not following up, like my own consistency really every day. It was just not working out. So, so what happened was that I eventually tried to find a way around it though. But by first test, I had, I had so many materials I had no year read. But well, after first test, they said, ah, this thing cannot happen to me again, no. So using that M1S1 postings, I tried to cover up. And I would just say, I would just say that the, the schedule, the them program on its own was challenging initially, but at least I adjusted at later on. Then, did I ever doubt myself at some point? Okay, another challenge, challenge was sleep though. I mean, for some reason, I just sleep too much then. And doubting myself, I... I said I was myself during the lockdown hmm. when I had not read for like months and I'm like how would I do this thing? <laughs> how I shall go to be able to just, just kukuma just pass this thing comfortably for myself it was just it was, I was doubting myself really because I my sister then she told me something she was like could you go and read your book you've not been reading because the way I was reading for my second MB during the three months strike because I was in school but then yeah we were home for 10 months my, I, felt, I felt my brain had even blocked like how am I going to write this exam but I came back and I had to pick up again. So yeah, then I was doubting myself if I could still get this, if, I could, if it could still be a possibility. And then after my, during the exam though, the mock, mm -hmm, the mock made me doubt myself a lot. I don't know what, that mock was just difficult. But the main was so much better. And then after my exam, yes, I was in social pathology for some reasons, but I was still hoping on pharmacology. Then they called me for pathology distinction by that. Then after the viber, I said I'm not getting this distinction. <laughs> I said I'm not getting this thing at all. Like Dr. Olishina, that man, he finished my life. The pathology viber was somehow like I was like, if it was me, like if I was if I was the person viber that was giving myself the viber, I would not even give myself distinction. I felt I didn't impress them, so I was really shocked and surprised when I still saw that I got it. What may be challenged to me may not be challenged to another person. But then, on a general level, there wasn't like a typical what everybody would consider as a challenge. Because to start with, I didn't even conceive the concept of getting a distinction from the beginning. It was just along the line, okay, my test scores have been consistently above 70. And I was like, oh, it's possible though, if it's easy to get 70 plus like this, maybe I could just get a distinction. So, talking about the challenges, I think the first challenge was getting to manage my time. Because now I was faced with a class that I have to attend from morning till evening and come back. And the only free time per se I had was the night time. And naturally, I've not been the night type. So, I had to find a way to adapt to this new environment. And if I want to say how I overcame that challenge, I would say that even though I'm still struggling with it now, but then I just want to extend my time a little longer in the evening. And then I come back, I'm very tired, I don't just rush to bed because I know that my sleep pattern, I don't feel sleepy immediately. So all those time between 6 pm and maybe 10 pm that I know that I cannot stay awake beyond, I just try to do something academic. And maybe other things like arranging the room and just anything I can do in the night that is not book I now want to do it after 10 p.m. because I know that if I open a book after 10 p.m. then like I'm sleeping in the next 10 minutes so that was a way and then if I sleep around 10 I just find a way to wake up before 5 so 5 to 6 I try to do something that's the way I overcame the time management one. and then another challenge came during our second test it was like I wasn't informed, so I spent up to one week reading the wrong time. And then when I learned, guy, yeah, this part of the school work you be reading is not like what we come out. So I had a big work to do within 
in one week and that's where fearless came in again so someone introduced me to fearless so i had to do a lot of all night classes like i had to force myself then financially well i was i've always been trying so that was a big challenge i think that's most of the challenge i faced well about that in myself for the fact that i didn't consider from the beginning i didn't really doubt myself but i took it as a joke when people even close to the exam proper people came to me and say ah guy you have to get a distinction so i was just flowing with them it was like a joke to me i didn't want to give it a serious thought but i knew that deep down there was just that little conviction that just maybe if i keep the tempo on if i don't relax if i just keep doing the work i'm doing maybe i make it because my test scores have been consistently good so that was just the thing there was no doubt but then i didn't take it like serious like i was of course, of course, there were times when the stress just you know, was too much. It was too much. We were having classes really close to the exams. Materials were piling up, and you know, plus the fact that I was missing my family, it was really hard to just you know try to get myself together. But what kept me going was you know the fact that I just had to make my my family. So it was really really stressful. I was I was stressed out. I at, well, I just had to stay strong and just keep pushing and just try to finish what I had already started. So thank God it ended well. Don't expect it. <laughs> Don't expect a distinction. Yes, because distinction comes from God. That's number one thing. Just the only thing I would like you to do is to give it your best, putting your efforts to God as well. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher. Most of the things your lecturers teach you might not understand you, but once you consult God, once you pray to God, definitely anything God teaches you, you it it you stick. For you is to just keep pushing, set out your goals, your target. You want to pass. Some people are like they're okay with passing. Then. You still have to work hard for you to pass. You don't just sleep on your bed and then expect to pass. But then, if you also want to get a distinction, like if you want to go beyond the 50 and you're comfortable, you know you have to work. Do the things, do what majority of the class is doing. That is good, because majority of the class will not be doing the wrong. If they're going for lectures, go for lectures. If it's practical, go for practical. Posting, go for posting. If they are having, if there is assignment to be done, do it. Like, just try and move along with your... But you just have to think your classes seriously because to be sincere the importance of class have never been overemphasized like the way at the end of the day most of the lecturers end up saying where they want you to know where they want you to concentrate on and sometimes most of the times they don't go beyond those places in their question so it helps you to tell her down your reading like it replaces your hard work with smart work like you don't have to read for 20 hours or so to pass you just have to be in class know what the lecturer wants know the direction he thinks towards it, and then just add it with a little extra effort and you're already excelling and then if you want to get the distinction you just have to start on time you don't have to wait for exam to come you don't want to be doing crash work trust me so you just have to start on time you're Reducing the class, the workload each time you're reading your book, one hour, 30 minutes. Like, even if it's 20 minutes, guy, yeah, just do something. At the end of the day, when you understand the effect of that long term accumulation, it's now very close to the exam, a week to the exam. Yes, you want to do crash work because everything has to be very fresh in your brain. But then you're very, very different from the person looking at all those material for the first time. You see, guy, yeah, like you're already a mile ahead because you've somehow skipped. You some some us can't do them. So that first and foremost, know that there is no formula. There is no formula. So just know how you function best. Know what works for you and keep going at it. Consistency is key. And then for me, the God factor is really really important. So as you're doing your best, also commit it into God's hands because you never really can tell. There are so many things that just happen in school so we just pray that you know everything goes